How you all doing? Welcome to my second video. So today I have for you an Escape from Tarkov inspired build. I had been wanting to build and explore the EFT stalker post-apocalyptic themed builds for a while now. And I really didn't know where to start until I found these turn-based miniatures. So now with the minis, I had to pivot on my base. Originally I wasn't going to have any, any minis in it, but seeing as how I had them now, I wanted to change it up a little bit. As I said, I wanted to explore this universe further, so my main idea for this was going to be some kind of factory, complex, chemical plant, and it needed to have a chimney that fell through and destroyed some of the buildings. I'd never done rubble on this scale before, so I really wanted to try. With that being said, grab your Comtax, crack open a can at the Shanka, and let's get straight into it. To start off, I used styrofoam for the base and used foam core cut at two inch tall strips for the buildings. Moving on from there, off screen, I applied this Christmas brick path roll that I got at Walmart. It did a good job in a pinch, but I probably wouldn't do it in the future just because the scaling is just a little bit off. Having done that, I wanted to add a little bit more visual texture, so I used the hot wire foam cutter to cut strips of XPS foam, and then I just glued them to the sides of the building using simple Elmer's glue. After doing some more work off screen on both the buildings, I went and primed them. I had recently picked up a 3D printer for those minis and I figured I may as well put it to use now because uh, I really didn't want to make the windows for the factory. The idea of scratch building that really put, put a hamper in this project. So I'm glad I got it. I can make another video on how I made this, but this is just plaster of Paris with some floral wire twisted and, and entombed in the, the plaster and then just broken up. It's a pretty easy effect, but I think it looks really good. Moving on to the front of the build, my brother kindly printed some uh, Soviet style walls off before I got my own printer. So I threw more of that floral wire that was twisted and made it look like barbed wire. These walls were just primed with a gray primer and then speckled with a ivory white cream color from a distance to give it a little bit of a speckled pattern for that concrete like look. And then simply they were just hot glued down. After having glued the walls, I then moved on to the ground texture, which is very similar from my last video. It's my homemade sculpt and mold mix, just applied evenly over the board. The back of the board's where it's gonna become a lot more interesting though. So this is where the chimney is going to be crashing through the buildings. At first I was going to make the base of it all just out of, out of sculpt the mold, but then it would have just taken away too long to dry, so I then took it off and added the styrofoam. Didn't even glue it, just added sculpt the mold right on top of it. So yeah, this is just to get the volume and the basic shape of the chimney in place. I will be adding a bunch of more debris, some more foam bricks on top of this, and some other stuff just to kind of cement it all together but again this is just to get the basic shape of that chimney that fell through the buildings this batch of sculpted mold was a little bit too wet so I had a little bit more working time it kind of helped me but normally it wouldn't be this wet you, know, you would normally have to be dipping your hands in water to keep it off your fingers and help smoothen it out moving on from there I then added the debris that I was talking about which is just crushed up plaster of Paris again and it's literally as easy as just putting it in a bag and crushing it with something heavy. Once I was happy with the plaster, I then moved on to the XPS foam bricks that I had made earlier in this project. And then, again, just like the plaster, I threw them about all over the place. No rhyme or reason, really, just place it wherever it looks natural. The idea was this was a brick chimney that fell through some buildings, it had a little bit of concrete with it as well, and again, just... Having that done, I now needed to worry about fixing it all in place. I used isopropyl alcohol, and I used a watered-down Mod Podge, and sprayed them both on everything just to cement it all together. You 
could have left it right there if you wanted a bigger pronounced rubble look, but I wanted to soften it up just a little bit, so I used some brick mortar mix and I just dusted it across the, so the, the surface. And then much like the debris, I used the same isopropyl alcohol and watered down Mod Podge mix to glue it all together. With all that glue on there, I wanted to let it dry, so I then took the building off and decided to paint it. I chose for the basic brick color Vallejo Light Rust, and then painted the entire building that color. Once that was dry, I then decided to pick out a couple of bricks here and there, just to give it a little bit more texture. I used all Vallejo paints for this. It was um, Light Rust, Rust, Dark Oxide, and I think uh, Brown Rose. Either way, just, just bricks come in so many different colors, you can kind of pick whatever you really want. This is where I kind of figured out the, the uh, scale was off, because I tried adding mortar lines that just didn't really work, so I had to scrap that. And then I just added a white glaze over the entirety of the surface, just to kind of uniform, make it, make, it, make it a little bit more uniform and tie everything together. Moving on from there, I then picked out the cement pillars and cement accents and painted them in a cement color. Just cream color with uh, a little bit of gray in it. Once I recovered and was happy with how the building looked, I then put it back on its base. And off screen, I dusted the debris pile with an ivory color from a spray can. With the buildings in the debris pile pretty far along, I now needed to focus on working on the ground cover. So to start off, I just took a dark brown color, in this case it was uh, burnt umber, and just covered all of the ground texture. That way, in case some of it would, would chip, you wouldn't be able to see it. The white sculpta mold underneath, that is. Now with the burnt umber applied, we can now move on to doing the dirt texture. Unlike my last video where I kind of just skimmed past how I do it, this is how you do it. So to start off, you apply watered down Mod Podge to the areas you want dirt texture to be showing. Having that done, now we move on to applying the actual dirt. In my case, I use a paint can lid that has dirt in it with a stocking wrapped around it, and I just shake it. You just, I want that fine dust almost. I do recommend working in small sections that the board just so you have the most control over it. And then again, much like the debris, to seal it, we use isopropyl alcohol and we use watered down Mod Podge again. Moving on from there, much like with the building, I want to accent all the bricks that are in this rubble pile. So I use a base coat, which is the same base coat I did on the building, of light rust and just go to town on every brick that I can find. Once the dirt texture was dry enough, I then moved on to applying the static grass. The grass I'm using is 2mm medium green woodland scenics grass. Um, much like my last video, you again, you just you, you apply some Mod Podge down and, and splotchy little patterns and you, you just shake it all on. And if you wanted some longer bits of grass, you would just repeat the same steps with longer grass. The patchy, splotchy areas really help sell that it's real and not just this faux carpet that's laid across the whole thing. I went back later and applied some 7mm and 12mm tufts uh, in random spots, not really that important, just to kind of sell that it's a little overgrown. Moving on from there, I went back to the previous building. I wanted to give it more of a lived in, reclaimed, like people had moved into it kind of a feel. So I added a tarp. To make it, I just took a piece of cut Kleenex or face tissue and I dunked it in some watered down PVA glue. And you just, I placed it over the hole and kind of just fold it around to get it to kind of like settle how you want. I then went about making Millie Putt sandbags to help hold that down and add accents to the rest of the building. Once the tarp was dry, I then 
painted it using US Field Drab from Vallejo and subsequently came back with a fewer lighter shades. I think this is a mixture of US Field Drab with a little bit of old wood, eventually settling all the way up to Iraqi sand. For these highlights, I'm just carefully picking out all of the raised flat edges that would naturally want to collect all that sunlight. I then moved on to painting the sandbags, and I didn't have a Vallejo color that I kind of wanted that was looking good enough, so I just used antique white from Apple Barrel actually. And then from there, I knew I had to do something I didn't want to do and tackle painting all of the 3D printed parts of this project. But for you, that's going to be a quick little swipe. Now, with those painted, I went about placing them in all sorts of different places, and I ended up with this layout. I could show you hours of footage of me tinkering with this, but this is what I settled with, and I'm pretty happy with it. I just ended up gluing them down using some simple PVA glue. After having finalized the placement of everything and gluing it all down, I then moved on to using oil paints for weathering. I uh, forgot to put a clear coat on, on it, so I ran into some disaster with the mineral spirits, so I think I salvaged it pretty well, but it's kind of why I'm not showing it, because it was kind of a disaster. <laughs> So then I went on to airbrushing the ground. Like I said in my last video, you don't have to go the whole crazy step of priming everything. You can absolutely use the colors as they, as they, as they are, and just add a little here and there. So again, I used an airbrush to highlight and add some more of the dryness back, and add more dusting and more dust effects. I think I was using Tamiya Buff. Um, yeah, again, just highlighting everything up, highlighting the paths, just giving a little bit more visual texture to the dirt. It also wasn't just on the ground. I also, as you can see, or as you saw, sprayed some on the buildings to help bring that dust to the buildings. Again, it ties everything together. It just, it makes everything feel cemented and belonging. I wanted to bring out the dirt and dust across that path, across the rubble, just to kind of accentuate it and show it as, as, as if people were walking across it a lot. It's quite really a simple step, but it just really brings in a lot of that visual flavor, that visual texture, just, it just, again, I really enjoy it. It just ties everything together. It makes everything feel real. With this done, I moved on to filling on the side, filling on the sides of the board with some spackling and giving it a good black paint job. With the border painted black, I then moved on to putting and placing the miniatures. With them on it, it really does feel completed. And um, speaking of completed, this video is finished. Thank you so much for watching. And um, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Uh, please like and subscribe. And I'm currently working on my next one, and hopefully I'll see you in that video. Cheers.